everyone, this is Celine from Blue Cala Patterns and welcome to video four for the Cosmos bag. Um, before we continue with the assembly, uh, now is the time to add piping to the front of your bag if that's something that you would like to do, but it is optional. So if you're not interested in adding any piping, you can just skip this next little part. Um, so using your front panel pattern piece, you're going to transfer the piping mark on either side of the bag. And this will be where you start and stop sewing on piping. I'm using pre-made piping. Um, I like this brand of piping because the tape portion is exactly 3 eighths of an inch and that's uh, the seam allowance that I use for uh, the construction of most parts of my patterns. So I'm going to go over to my machine and I'll switch the camera over. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll start, I'll have the piping uh, just at the piping mark that we just uh, uh, transferred onto our front panel exterior piece. I'll have it curving outwards and then I'm going to kind of little do a little fold here and have it just baste it on all along this curved edge until I get to the piping mark on the opposite side and then again I'll just curve it outwards and if you have a piping foot that would be ideal but if you don't you can just use your zipper foot um, I actually just use my regular foot because it's quite narrow I use my regular foot when I'm basting and even when I'm sewing on and I just kind of feel where the piping cord is to make sure that I'm sewing as close as possible. Okay, so as I mentioned previously, you start uh, by curving your piping outwards at that piping mark that we just made. And I'm just using a basting stitch and about one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now here, because I, I need to kind of fold in, I need to pinch it and fold it in, I'm actually gonna just do two quick little cuts uh, just so that it folds in nicely because I want that the, uh, the raw edge of my piping to follow the raw edge of my front panel. And then I just follow the raw edges together along that curved edge. This is obviously the easy part uh, about sewing piping on. It's when you're doing uh, assembly that it gets a little bit trickier because you want to make sure that you're sewing as close as you can to the piping cord. But I do like this piping because as long as I'm following my seam allowances very, very closely, it usually uh, ends up pretty successful. Okay, and now when I'm getting close to the piping mark on the other side, I'm actually going to be doing exactly the same thing as when I started. I'm just gonna do a couple of cuts. And then just going to curve it outwards here at this second piping mark. I'm just going to do a little back stitch so my basting stitches don't come out. And then okay, and then this is done. Hopefully you can see all that. Okay, so now I have my front panel exterior piece with the piping basted on. And what we're going to do in the next step is attach the uh, the front panel lining piece and exterior pieces to the other edge of our zipper. And uh, this is the one of the areas where uh, I had a couple of uh, testers stumble a little bit, so I think the video will help make sure that everyone understands pretty clearly what's going on. So what I want first is my center marks on these pieces. So. The, I want the center mark on the lining piece. I want it on the right side. So fold in half vertically, wrong sides together, and mark the center at the top and the bottom on the right side. Okay, for the 
exterior piece I want the opposite so we're going to fold this sorry the opposite would be the opposite so we're going to fold this right sides together in half vertically and I'm marking the center along the top and the bottom okay so now we're going to take the lining piece first and we're going to start by lining up the center mark that we made on our zipper with the center mark on the lining piece and again this isn't as easy as if it was uh, a straight edge obviously but it's actually not too difficult now you should have trimmed your zipper tabs so that they're at the same spot as the top corners of your top panel and then you're lining up your lining piece with the edge of your zipper tab and then you do everything in between And because I'm dealing with a curve, I use a lot of clips or pins, whatever you're using. I just want uh, no movement at all. And when I'm done uh, pinning or clipping, I'm just going to base the zipper to the lining piece very quickly with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'll go base this in place very quickly and then we'll attach the exterior piece. Okay, so the lining piece is based it on. This is what it should look like at this point. And now we're going to add on our exterior piece. And what I just do is I kind of, I curve my zipper this way because it's, I find it's easier if I'm clipping when it's curving this way as opposed to doing it and having it curve this way it just makes uh, less chance of uh, having puckers okay so i'm doing exactly the same thing starting with my center marks so this is it's a little bit looks a little bit confusing but this is what it should look like and i'm going to start with my center marks of course and then super important it's going to be really helpful if you can line up all of these edges together perfectly and when you're sewing them together. So I start by clipping that outer, that outer corner here and then I clip everything in between and again it's a curve so I'm adding like I'm adding a lot of pins or clips. If it seems like it doesn't fit always start by pinning your centers and then the center in between and then it helps you to ease it in a little bit better. Okay, same for the other side. Start by lining up those corners and pinning them. And then the center between that and then the center between here and here. Okay. So now I'm going to go sew this together. Uh, this time I'm sewing with one quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to make sure that I backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so the exterior is sewn on now. Um, when you're sewing, uh, you make sure that you uh, pull the zipper pulls out of the way when you get to that spot. And you might have to pause and lift your foot and sort of adjust the front panel so that it's nice and straight as you're sewing it on. So now I'm just going to flip uh, the exterior and the lining so that they are wrong sides together. And I'm just gonna put one clip here at the center marks because I want these two pieces to always be perfectly centered. And I'm going to take out my iron and I'm going to press the seam allowance away from the zipper along the lining side and the exterior side before I top stitch. Okay, so I set up uh, my iron so you can see me pressing the seam allowance. It's not super complicated where it requires a demonstration, but um, just going to show you how I do it because it is a bit awkward. It's got that curve. And I'm keeping this pinned here because uh, even when I top stitch, I want to make sure that 
the bottom centers are always aligned. Now when I'm doing the exterior, I'm just going to flip it like this. I just find it easier, if, especially if you're pressing on a flat surface. Move my poles. Move my poles out of the way. And I removed my clip. Okay, so now that it's all nice and pressed, I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to top stitch the seam allowance um, along the bottom edge here with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so the top stitching is done along the bottom edge of my zipper. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to baste uh, the front, the exterior and the uh, lining uh, front panel pieces. I'm going to baste them together um, along the entire edge here with one quarter inch seam allowance uh, because I would like them to stay together perfectly for the next step. I don't want them to um, shift or anything like that so I'm just going to add a few clips and then I'm going to go over to my machine and quickly baste stitch them together and then we will be attaching our gusset pieces okay so the bottom curved edges are sewn together you'll see I've made sure that they're perfectly aligned now I'm going to need the uh, lining and the exterior gusset pieces okay and you want to make sure that you have center marks on both of these pieces I don't have them on my lining piece so I'm just going to fold in half this way wrong sides together and I want my center marks on the top and the bottom on the right side now, it's very important that you determine what is the front and the back of your gusset. So if you look at your pattern piece, I did write it down for you. So this will be the back of the bag. So this, this side here will be attached to the back panel. And this is the front of your bag. So this will be attached to the bottom of your front panel where you, you have piping. So I'm gonna place first the lining piece and I want my lining gusset to be right sides together with my, um, my lining, my front panel lining piece. And like usual, we are lining up our center marks first. Now, it was hard to explain how to sew the corners on for the gusset, so uh, the video will help make this a little bit more clear. So what I'm doing is I'm just pinning this. I start at the center and then I work my way along this curve. And I'll show you what it looks like from the wrong side in a minute. So just pin it all the way until it stops and it should and just a little bit over the piping mark that we made, maybe like an inch over the piping mark. Okay, and then do the same thing for the other side. Just going to adjust these a little bit. That's just my iron turning off. Okay. Now, when I sew the gusset on, I don't start from one of the corners and work my way all the way down. Um, I actually start sewing at the center mark. And then I work my way towards one corner and then I flip it over and I do the same thing on the opposite side. So I will move my camera over to my machine and show you how I do this. Okay, so I'm gonna find the center mark, which is right here. And that's actually where I'm going to start sewing. 
I'm going to start at the center mark, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to work my way to one of the corners. Now, when you get to the corner, you see the corner tapers. So you're going to do exactly the same thing when you're sewing. You start with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, and you're out, don't forget you have your piping here. So you have to follow 3 8 of an inch until you get to the edge of your piping here. And then when you get to the top edge of your piping, I want you to continue in a straight line and just sew to the very corner of that gusset. So you're you're reducing the seam allowance that you're using and following the center of the corner of this gusset piece. So I'll go over to the machine and hopefully it'll be a little bit more clear when you see me sewing it. And then I'll show you also the line of stitching so you can see how I uh, reduce the seam allowance past the piping. If you're not, if you haven't installed piping, just make sure that you've added those piping marks anyways so that you know where you need to start tapering the seam allowance. Okay, so as I just mentioned, I'm going to start sewing at my center marks. I'm just going to find where those are. And it's right here. And I am sewing with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now, you don't have to worry too much about the piping in this step because we're going to be sewing on our exterior the same way and that's the step where we want to pay attention to how close we are getting to our piping. Okay, so I continue sewing with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So I'm getting close to where my uh, the top edge of my piping is. I continue with 3 eighths of an inch and then I'm just going to, at this point here, I just want to make sure that this little portion that's left that I'm sewing directly down the center until I sew to the point, the very point here at the corner. And then I backstitch. Okay, so here's what it should look like you can see that 3 8 of an inch and then once I get to the top edge of the piping I just uh, taper my seam allowance and I'm sewing right through the center of the corner of the the gusset piece now I'm going to just flip this over and I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the other side okay so the lining is sewn on now we're going to do the exterior and again make sure that you have uh, the part of the gusset that is the front of the bag lined up with the bottom center mark, which I have to find here. Okay, and you're doing exactly the same step as we just did to sew on the, uh, the gusset lining piece. Now this time though, when you're sewing on, you really have to try and sew as close as you can to your piping. So you might have to try a few times and uh, so so first sew it um, as I just instructed for the lining gusset piece and then uh, when you're done stop and have a look at your piping just to make sure that you've sewn close enough the whole way to the piping cord. So you really just want the cord to be showing and not the tape portion of your, your piping. And if you see there's a few areas where you didn't sew close enough, then you just go back and sew again closer in that area until you're happy with um, the way that it looks. So I'm not gonna show the sewing of the exterior. It's exactly the same as the lining. Uh, you're doing the same thing and tapering your seam allowance past the top edge of the piping uh, to sew through the center of the, the corner. It's exactly the same. And uh, don't rush through this step. This is probably the seam that you want to have look the nicest. So 
uh, take your time and, and sew it on nicely. Okay, that looks good. So I'm going to go over to my machine and sew this on. Okay, so the um, the exterior and the lining are both sewn along that bottom seam. Now because it's a curved edge, you're going to want to trim or notch that seam allowance so that it sits nicely. Um, I'm just going to trim, but I'm just going to start trimming at the area where there's piping. Now you have a couple of options. You can just press the seam allowance um, away so you'll You'll pull both the exterior and the lining piece away from that front panel and press that seam allowance. If you don't find it too awkward, you can also top stitch the seam allowance just beneath that piping. It's really personal preference and do whatever you prefer. Now it is a bit awkward to press this seam. So I would actually uh, suggest using your uh, ironing board and put it over the, the, sh the narrower end of your ironing board and pressing the seam allowance. And make sure you press it from the, the lining side and the exterior side. Um, I'm not going to show that process, it's a little bit boring, but I'm sure everyone understands how to press the seam allowance. Um, and then. Um, uh, once I'm done pressing, I'll show you uh, how we're going to baste all the outer edges so that everything stays together before the next step. Okay, so I've pressed the seam allowance. It's a bit of annoying seam allowance to press, but if you if you do it properly, it's really worth it. Now, you might be wondering, what do I do with these awful corners? All you're doing is you're just pulling uh, the lining and the exterior together towards the outside. So now what we're going to do before we continue, we're actually going to base stitch all the way around so that these edges uh, stay together. And I'm just going to add a few clips before I do that because I want my centers lined up perfectly. And also we're doing the top panel, the, the back edge here of the top panel, so clip that together as well. Okay, so same on with this side. Just pull everything towards the exterior, towards the outside edge. Now, one of the, although construction is a bit unusual, one of the benefits to sewing this bag this way is that if you're not a fan of baggy linings, it's pretty much uh, impossible here because you're lining in your exterior sewn together in the seams so they're always going to be together not uh, not separating or loose inside the bag okay and now i'm just going to go over to my machine and i'm just doing a quick base stitch all the way around um, with a one eighth or one quarter inch seam allowance, it really doesn't matter what seam allowance, as long as it's less than three eighths of an inch. Okay, the outer edges are all sewn together, so we don't have to worry about uh, layers shifting when we're pinning everything together in the next step. Now we're going to attach the lining panel to this piece. Before you do this, open up your zipper pocket, otherwise you will be very angry with yourself and place it like this or you can just hold it in your hands it doesn't really matter and we're just going to start by sewing this together now we're not sewing all the way from one end to the other we're going to be leaving uh, a seam allowance space so what I'll do first take your back panel lining piece your back panel exterior piece and grab a ruler and a pen and then I want to make a mark 3 eighths of an inch from either corner. Okay, and do the same on the outside edge as well. And then just join those. 
and you'll have a point here. That's 3 8 of an inch from either side. Okay, so hopefully you can see this in this corner. Okay, you want to do the same for the lining. Now that, this corn, little corner, is where you're going to start and stop sewing. Now, you'll see that this top straight edge of your lining panel, your back panel, should be exactly the same length as your top panel piece, and it is pretty much identical. So, now you could sew this whole piece in one step, but I don't know why my my brain would, wants to sew it in two separate steps. But you can do whatever you like. So I'm just pinning this edge, this top edge. And then I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm starting at this corner mark, back stitching, sewing all the way across. Make sure you're, you're keeping your 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then when I get to this other corner, I stop, I back stitch. Okay? And then we'll sew the rest. Okay, hopefully you can see my stitching. Um, it's the same, my thread is the same color as, as the lining fabric. Hopefully you can see this, but I stopped and I started at these corner marks. So now I'm going to pin the rest and as usual, start with the center marks. Okay, and then I don't pin starting right here. I sort of start a little bit in the middle. Okay. And in the middle again. Middle. Middle. In the middle here. Here, here, you might have to um, clip this out of the way. We don't want to sew this up. Here. And then do the same thing for the other side. And then you'll go over to your machine and you start at this corner mark here, back stitch. So all the way around with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now for the lining, um, if you find it easier, you can actually sew with a little bit less than 3 8 of an inch seam allowance because when we sew on our back panel, we're sewing exactly the same seam. And that one, it's important to have 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Um, so you're going to sew around. Sorry, I kind of got off track here. But you're going to start here, sew all the way around until you get to that other corner mark, and then you'll backstitch. Okay, so the lining is sewn on now. Before we finish the next step, we need to sew on our connectors, which I could have done uh, before sewing on the lining, but it doesn't really matter as long as you do it before you attach your um, exterior back panel. So if you're using D-ring connectors, it's really easy. You just base them on here. Uh, you want the top edge here to be lined up with probably your top stitching here, just beneath your zipper. If you're using a grommet tab for the, uh, the, the, the hip bag, you do exactly the same thing. The only thing is you have a straight edge here and you'll see it kind of angles upwards. So when you're basting it on here, you want to make sure that it's angled upwards going uh, towards the center of the bag so that when you turn the bag right side out, that those tabs uh, go upwards uh, in this direction as well when it's the bag is turned. Um, so I'm just using regular D-ring connectors so I'm going to go over and I'm going to base stitch one on each side just beneath my 
my uh, top stitching here and I leave a little bit of the uh, D-ring connector sticking out a quarter inch, half an inch, um, depends how precise you were here with the cutting. Um, I'll probably just do a quarter inch for this one. Okay, D-ring connectors are based on on either side, just beneath my zipper. Um, this is probably the most annoying step of this bag. Um, and if you're like me and you used a really thick fabric, so I've used a canvas, it will get a little bit uh, tricky here at the corners because there will be a little bit of bulk to deal with. Um, so go slowly. And you're sewing on exactly uh, the same way as you did the back panel lining piece. So I probably won't show you the whole thing. Um, but yeah, so you start and you sew this top edge and you're going from the corner to the corner and you're back stitching. And then when that's done, you're really going to have to sort of push your bag inside here. And again, if like me, you've used a heavy canvas, it's going to be a little bit trickier. If you're using just quilt weight cotton, it'll be a lot easier. Um, so you really got to just tuck all of that in and then clip it and then you're sewing again uh, from, this, uh, from this corner all along this bottom curved edge to this corner. Um, if you find it easier, you can sew starting from the center mark to up to one corner and then flip it over and sew from the other corner, from the center to the other corner. The only thing you'll want to do is you want to make sure that you're sewing inside uh, the line of stitching from when you attached your back panel lining piece because you don't want those stitches to show on the exterior of your bag. So if, you're, if you accidentally use a smaller seam allowance when you're sewing on the back panel, your lining panel stitches will show on the exterior. So before you turn your bag, you'll trim your seam allowance and then you'll also verify to make sure that your exterior stitches are inside of your lining stitches. And if you want to make that a little bit easier, you can use a different thread color when you're sewing on the back panel. That way there you can make sure that you're going inside of your lining stitches. I still need this to be out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sew all of this together and then um, I'll just come and show you trimming the seam allowance and turning the bag right side out. It can be a little bit tricky to turn this bag right side out depending on the materials you used. I'm expecting a little bit of trouble just because I use that heavy canvas for my exterior but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the back is sewn on and um, I did definitely regret my choice of exterior fabric. It was much too thick, um, but I managed. <laughs> and I, <clears throat> I did use a contrasting thread here to sew on the back so that I could make sure I was inside of my line of stitching from my lining. But looking back, I think it would be much, much easier if when sewing on this uh, lining back panel, if you used a one quarter inch seam allowance and it just would have made it um, that much easier to sew on the back panel. So learn from my mistakes and use one quarter inch, which I'll update in the instructions. Um, use one quarter inch seam allowance to sew on the lining back panel and then use three eighths of an inch to sew on the exterior. So I just trimmed my seam allowance and I should probably trim some threads. Now I'm going to reach in and it's this is not an easy part if you've used thick material like I have so you'll get to watch me struggle to do this. <laughs> okay so I'm gonna try to actually do it this way and hopefully I don't break anything here. Um, yeah, I've made several of these bags and it is much, much easier if you're using quilt weight cotton by far. I even think that this would be easier uh, when, like when I did my all vinyl version and I did do an all cork version 
Um, I didn't use fleece or anything. I just interfaced my lining. No interfacing at all on the cork or vinyl and it was a breeze to sew compared to this one. So, um, if you're using really thick uh, canvas, you might want to not put the fleece on. Learn from my mistakes. Okay, I'm almost done. Okay, now for th the only thing we have left, other than sewing the bottom of our zipper pocket shut, is to press the bag, of course, and then um, sew our adjustable strap. So, I'm not going to cover a sewing an adjustable strap because I've done that a million times in my videos and if you want to make your strap uh, entirely out of cork or vinyl, I would recommend that you watch video 5 for the Baronia Bowler series. If you want to make it out of fabric, I show you how to make an adjustable strap in fabric in my Sweet Pea video series. So those are all free videos that you can find on my channel. Okay, so the bag is done. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to stuff it, I'm going to press it, obviously it needs a really good press. Um, and then I'm going to make my adjustable strap. Now, if you are doing the hip bag, and I'm going to go get my hip bag. Now, if you're making this bag for someone else, you, it's much easier if you can get their waist measurement. I know not everyone likes to share that, uh, but it is definitely easier to get their waist measurement and figure out which size the strap needs to be. And I'm trying to find, where did I, yes. So what I did was I measured my waist and then I measured uh, would be nice if I had a really long ruler or a measuring tape. Then I measured the distance from here to here. So really I want the center of where my grommets are. And then I took that measurement. So it's about 13 and a quarter. And I did my waist measurement minus this measurement and then I added five inches because you're going to be folding over the strap and you might want to make it um, adjustable. I can't remember now what my final measurement is and I don't think anybody really needs to know it, but that's how I figured out the length of my waist strap. And you'll see it's, it's much, much shorter than um, a crossbody strap uh, because um, usually a crossbody strap is much, much, much longer to make. Um, so that's how you figure out the measurement for your waist strap. And I used the same method in the Baronia Bowler Video 5. Um, I used exactly that technique to make an all vinyl strap. Um, so that's the end of that. You just have to sew the bottom of your uh, zipper pocket shut. Sew up your either your waist strap or your crossbody strap. Stuff your bag and press it and you're all done.